If you've been following my videos since last year, you may have seen me mention the possibility of a new roller coaster being considered for Universal's Islands of Adventure at the Universal Orlando Resort. Now that work walls have gone up and site clearing has begun, I think it's time to dig deeper into this exciting new addition to the park. Last month, work walls went up around several areas inside of the Jurassic Park land at Islands of Adventure. One of the first sets of walls went up around the carnival skill games in the area. As I've stated in my previous video, the games will need to be moved to make way for the relocation of the popular raptor encounter. Once the raptor encounter has moved, demolition on the old Triceratops encounter plot can begin, where much of this new ride will take place. Walls also went up around the Discovery Center's downstairs exit, blocking the entire waterfront area from guests. Trees, bushes, lamp posts, speakers, and even the trellises that were in front of the Discovery Center are being completely removed from this area. That's because part of the roller coaster's track will pass in front of the Discovery Center. Looking at the proposed track layout, we can see that the main queue, maintenance areas, and a good portion of the ride will take place in and around the Triceratops Encounter plot. That walkthrough attraction closed permanently nearly a decade ago, and much of this land sat unused until now. The new coaster's entrance will be down in front of the Discovery Center, with the extended queue located along the waterfront. While we don't know many of the specific details for the ride yet, looking at the track layout, it does look like the ride will start with a brief show scene. Rumors are that this will include the Raptors in some way, and my guess has been that we'll see the Raptors' stable doors swing open, and just as they start to run, our coaster train is sent into a launch to kick off the ride. We'll be passing over and under pieces of track, through caves and jungle theming, surrounded by rockwork and other themed elements. This section of the ride reminds me of Tehran at Fantasialand in Germany, which was the coaster I compared the new Jurassic coaster to in my last video. That coaster fits a whole lot of action into a small footprint, and the swirling track sections traveling around the old Triceratops encounter here is certainly similar. Like Tehran, this new coaster is rumored to be made by Intamin, they were also the company behind the new Hagrid's motorbike coaster, opening later this year in the same park. Unlike Tehran and the new Hagrid coaster, I do believe that the new Jurassic coaster will contain several inversions. It does look like this new coaster will have two launches, just like Tehran. While it is difficult to determine the heights of the track sections from a two-dimensional track layout, some rumors have that second launch heading into a coaster maneuver referred to as a top hat. A top hat is a very tall segment of track that allows the coaster trains to head nearly 90 degrees up and then back down. While this one will have us travel up at quite an incline, it may not have a true 90 degrees up and down. Whatever it is, it looks like that second launch will really pack a punch. On the way down from that extremely tall top hat maneuver, it is rumored that our train will reach speeds up to 75 miles per hour. That would make this the fastest multi-launch coaster in the world, beating Tehran by a couple miles per hour, which tops out at 72.7. After passing in front of the Discovery Center, the track heads towards the back of Hogsmeade Village. It makes a large rotation 540 degrees before returning back across the lagoon, this time very low to the water. But that won't be the end of the ride. Before it's over, it's rumored that we will encounter those raptors once more in an enclosed section of track at the end of the ride. Hopefully there's a raptor training expert on hand to save the day before our ride ends back at Unload, where it all started. You're probably asking now, will this ride be based on Jurassic Park or Jurassic World? The answer is a little complicated. Even though the land is still Jurassic Park at Islands of Adventure, they've already begun to sprinkle in elements from Jurassic World, namely Blue, who you can now meet at Raptor Encounter regularly. It's my guess that the new Raptor Coaster will be created along the same lines. It will feel like a Jurassic World ride, it will contain raptors and characters from the Jurassic World film series, but will technically exist at Jurassic Park in Islands of Adventure. Of course, the rumor is if the Jurassic World redo of Hollywood's River Adventure ride performs well, we may see the Orlando version transformed also. That would lead to an eventual retheme of the entire land. But if the new World version of the ride underperforms in Hollywood, we'll likely never see a complete retheme here in Orlando. So, if the coaster is going to have the look and feel of the Jurassic World films, what color scheme can we expect to see? 
I would suggest you take a look at the new colors being featured in Hollywood's River Adventure redo for an example of what we might expect for this new coaster. To get the new coaster off the ground, many small changes still need to be made around the area. According to demolition permits, we can see that the Jurassic Games and nearby kiosks will all be relocated or demolished. Also, all of the old Triceratops encounter barns and other structures inside will be completely demolished. We're expecting to see the games move to an area across from the back of the Discovery Center, where the entrance to the Burger Diggs restaurant is located. There are two ponds there currently, but permits have them being removed and filled in to make room for more covered outside seating, as well as the new placement for the carnival games. The Raptor Encounter is expected to find its new home between the River Adventure entrance and the Pizza Predatoria restaurant. Some of the biggest changes to the land will be happening in front of the Discovery Center where all that land clearing has been going on in recent weeks. The bypass bridge that was built during the construction of Hogsmeade is currently closed until the summer. It is expected to be rebuilt from the ground up, coming back as a much more permanent structure. The updated bridge will lead to a completely reconfigured waterfront courtyard, with a lot more room for guests to get in line for the new coaster or watch it pass overhead and over the water from newly expanded viewing areas. It is not known yet when the new coaster will be completed, and Universal Orlando has yet to confirm that such a project is even underway. Rumors have the new ride opening by the summer of 2021 at the latest, which is when the next Jurassic World sequel is set to hit theaters. Although, according to documents obtained by Chip Scambus of WFTV, it's estimated that construction will only take one and a half years, which could have it opening as soon as summer of 2020. Stay tuned to the channel for continuing coverage of this exciting new thrill ride, and whether or not this will mean a complete Jurassic World overhaul for the land. Let me know what you think about the new ride so far in the comments, and stay tuned for more theme park news and rumors coming soon. Thanks for watching. See you next time.